marks are good only for an admission marks are not good for a career the results have started coming state board results have come now central board results are going to be announced shortly those parents who had visualized that your child would get uh, 95% 99% but due to some sort of reasons were not able to get that much of marks relax marks do not reflect the intelligence of the child marks do not reflect the creativity of the child marks certainly do not reflect the brilliance of the child so for almost 29 indian children have minor primers on the next oh you can be next if you are listening to this Welcome to this special episode of ICT Academy Dialogue that throws light on what after higher secondary education. Today we have Dr. Sultan Ahmed Ismail, the veteran educationist and author and the director of Eco Science Research Foundation. Welcome sir. Good morning. And uh, this is a season where uh, we have the plus 2 results and 10th standard results coming up and uh, the reason for this special episode with you is to have li- a light on what sh- what should uh, students think of when they choose the course after their schooling uh, that's a wonderful marvelous question you know like uh, every child uh, in their own self when they are studying they start seeing several subjects and especially to my knowledge uh, uh, usually the teacher who teaches the subject has a major influence on the child's future career because the children develop a fancy for a particular subject based on how beautifully the teacher has been transferring knowledge or information or how the teacher has been moving with the children so children by themselves they start uh, developing a fanciful uh, thought that i would like to study this i would like to study that but then what happens parental and peer group pressure starts coming upon them saying that this is better that is better and uh, usually today there is a sort of a um, concentration on a few courses like for example medicine engineering uh, computers commerce and uh, people feel that these are the only courses that would be able to sustain their child in the future and they would go all the way out to pressurize their child to so that the child does very well in neat or does very well in iit g or any of the competitive examinations thereby the child's future would be very bright and brilliant it's not so it's not so i beg to differ with that okay. yes uh, what they may be seeing is with reference to financial returns what i prefer to see in a child is the child's happiness in future so if you really want to see a child happy in the way because uh, having been associated with several institutions and organizations which train children into various uh, uh, things after their graduation today i feel that most of the engineering students they start thinking what they should do in life after completing their engineering yeah because the present day engineering students are mostly been um, channelized to do engineering by their uh, adults who have been have who had a say in their career or who were able to influence these children that engineering was the best course for them today most of these children are looking for uh, better opportunities through other courses mm-hmm. like most of them would like to do an mba where they would go, like to go into the management cadre or some of them most of them are preferring to do ias because i have been associated with some of the academies of ias trainings and i feel that most of the children who are even successful are engineers who have completed their engineering so it is not what course you study it is what you study that matters it is not how well you get the marks it is what passion you have in that particular subject that which makes you what you are marks are good only for an admission marks are not good for a career the results have started coming state board results have come now central board results are going to be announced shortly there will be children who would be expecting around 99% but uh, unfortunately on the mark list you may get around 80 or 85% doesn't mean that the child has done bad it, it, it marks do not reflect the intelligence of a child marks do not reflect the creativity of the child marks certainly do not reflect the brilliance of the child and once you are successful nobody asks you what class you have passed when you invited me for the show you never asked me which class did you pass your bsc in msc yeah. you invited me because i have made a mark in education so it it's marks is only for an entry point for a child and not for the brilliance of the career of the child yeah. so i my humble request would be for the parents to just throw open to the child okay fine you tell me what you would like to study yeah. then prioritize it and never tell the child with one particular subject in life i always beg to disagree with parents who say always focus on what you want to do what you want have 1 2 3 4 5 
have to, you decide on plan A. If plan A doesn't work out, English has 25 more alphabets. Plan till Z. Finally, you come up in life. That is what is important in life, not what I must study, how I must study. A child may say that I would like to do, for example, I did zoology. Uh, and when I wanted to do zoology, the casual remark in those days, I, uh, you know, like in the early 70s, uh, late 69, 70, uh, people asked me, Are, do you want to become a butcher after completing your zoology? <laughs> it is not so. It is your passion towards a particular subject which makes you what you are. So, my humble request to parents at this particular stage is, in case your child gets brilliant marks and takes uh, whatever course you had in mind and the child in mind was successful to obtain it, well and good, good luck to you. Those parents who had visualized that your child would get 95%, uh, 99%, but due to some sort of reasons, were not able to get that much of marks, relax. Allow the child to study whatever else the child would like to study. And maybe the child would be much better and shine better than what you had in mind for the child to study. Uh, when we talk about uh, leaving the option to the children, uh, as far as their age is concerned, and uh, how could we expect them to have such an exposure in making the choice? And this is, a, uh, this is where most parents have... What did you study? Yeah, I, I did my MA in English. Sir. Why? Because your mom said that you should study English or you had a liking for English? I had a liking for English as well as my mom and sister. But you also had a passion for English. Yeah, yeah, I had a passion. The same way. Okay. The same way. Even in my early days when there was so much of pressure, my pressure was that I should study medicine because as a science student, everybody dreams that you should do medicine. You would be surprised that I would be happy to declare today that in the interview for a medical college in those days, I went through all the topics of zoology and I went over there and the question that was asked to me in the interview was just one question okay. and that was I will never forget in my life. What is the difference between a statue and a statute? <laughs> Isn't it a mockery on the system? Statue is what we design and keep it was on a pedestal and the statute is what is the law or the bill which is passed in the parliament. Yes. So I told them this is the thing but I did not get received. Oh. Okay fine. Now, so people said, study chemistry. Now, I did not have the courage to say no. But the only thing I said was, if I study chemistry, I'll take six years to pass. <laughs> if you give me zoology, I can pass in three years. Okay. So, you know, like, it, it's my passion that I should study zoology because my teacher was a very influential, in fact, wonderful teacher in science who taught me zoology in my pre-university. Uh, that, that made me think whether I can do something. I took zoology. Today, I'm known through the world through my subject. Maybe as a doctor, I do not know how much I would have failed to perform as a doctor. As you rightly pointed out, how will the child know yeah. what is to study? The child may have a broad knowledge. I would like to do something related to plants. I may like to do something related to chemicals, chemistry. Mm -hmm. I may like to do something on photography. I may like to do something on fashion designing. I may like to do something on dressmaking, on some broad topic. It's up to the adults, the teachers, the counselors. And today it's all available on the net. There are more than 150 subjects which a child can study after completing plus two. Okay. You and I did not have the choice. Yes. I would like to narrate an incident over here. When I was vice principal of New College at that time, a parent brought a child and the child had scored more than 1000 marks in plus two. And the child was getting admitted to BA in English, your subject. Now, I was really fascinated as a vice principal. I complimented. I said, uh, you should be uh, having a great passion for the subject that you would like to study English. And the mother, who was a practicing doctor, mm. um, what I mean to say is an educated family, told me, unfortunately, my child is not eligible for any other course. Oh. I said, what do you mean? She said, I wanted to put my child in commerce, but he is not eligible for commerce. I said, he is eligible for corporate. Is that so, sir? I did not know. Can you please help me? Now, even you told about children, even parents are not aware yeah. that there are more than 150 courses for these children which they can study. Mm -hmm. So, I would appreciate the concerned institutions. They must have a room, a counseling room, where children can meet, understand what are the courses available, then go and apply. Unfortunately, in our system, what happens is, it's rather unfortunate. Uh, sociology, psychology, English, uh, history, these are all brilliant courses overseas. Yeah. Where people, you know, like they can't immediately get uh, admission into these courses, especially sociology. Every industry wants a sociologist, every industry wants a counselor. 
but uh, in our system if you go to most of these colleges and say that uh, i need bcom i need some computer science and immediately the principal will say your marks are so low you take sociology you take history it's something like you know like a subject which a child has to uh, willingly or unwillingly complete just because that seat is available for the child uh, i i strongly believe that uh, the capacity of the children to get admission should be based on the passion of the child and not on the marks of the child do we select a student for agriculture university based on the capacity of the student to handle a spade handle it a machine hand or plow the soil or use a crowbar and dig the soil no you select them on marks so after completion most of them would prefer to be in the bank mm. rather than go and work in the field so our selection patterns are a bit faulty so parents at this time please be very careful when you are trying to advise your children see to it that you are advising them not trying to pressurize them advise them counsel them yeah. and from that the child should be able to grow uh, the other part of my question was when children are least exposed to certain things and uh, how to educate parents to have a balanced uh, discussion with their children when they are to choose the course after the school a parent should be able to be open with the child and to say okay da we will apply for some courses what are the courses you think you have in mind that we could try to look into and today everything is available at the touch of a button mm. so the, let the family sit together go through the courses show the child these are the courses these are the courses these are the, everything is available on net today uh, don't go for a particular institution first you decide about the course you will study as to what are the courses mm. then you can always get an institution which will be able to help you obtain that particular course a family that uh, sits together talks together that's going to be no problem is only a family where the parents have already decided what the child should study where they consider that a child is something like a uh, a crop mm. i sowed the seed so i have the, the right to harvest that is where the complication starts yeah. uh, as you are talking about the peer pressure that students undergo when uh, they are to choose a course is it not the peer pressure that the parents undergo that make uh, shift the pressure that they undergo towards their children ah it's both ways mm. so what happens is normally you know good friends classmates one student goes and joins uh, definitely says that i'm going to join college a with course number a mm. then immediately the friend says uh, appa amma i want to join the same college with the same course because my classmate is going to be there so the first thing i have to tell children is you can be friends even if you don't attend the same course in the same college once they complete the courses definitely they're going to be placed elsewhere sometimes they may go into different continents different countries the problem with parents is parents most of them feel what somebody will think about their children that's the greatest pressure every child is different every child is an individual every child is unique and uh, if at all you want to blame children i always tell parents you beat yourself because your genes are running in that child so there's no point of complaining to the child because you have transferred your genes and as a science uh, person as a biologist i know that uh, the capacity to learn is inherited from the parents so if your child is not doing well blame yourself for it not your children for it sometimes you know like children who have not done very well in school may shine brilliantly in college because you you suddenly feel that you have immense freedom in a college you have capacity to acquire knowledge through various sources in a college i would uh, appreciate parents who should be the first one to be supportive to the children rather than an outsider you don't need a counselor you don't need somebody to come and tell you a child you know your child better so if you know your child better now as uh, as rightly pointed out when we were talking privately that uh, you were poor in mathematics i was equally poor in mathematics so you know like i always used to tell uh, my own workshops when i conduct for teachers chemistry and math never entered into my head you can imagine now i can be openly tell you that uh, you you just got to source my name in google and you will get a lot of information about what all i have done but as a student i came college first in zoology when i in my graduate program feel very happy no yes. i came college second in botany not very high marks but college second in botany in those days they wouldn't give high marks again bright but my aggregate was only second class because of chemistry <laughs> so you know like what i mean to say is you you can't be a master in every subject you can't be a master in every subject there are few exceptional students who may be brilliant in all the subjects they may be brilliant by choice or they may be brilliant by roting what all they studied i come to understand that some years back you know like uh, uh, one of the vice chancellors of anna university 
in Chennai. Mm. They conducted an examination for first year students who have joined a Nai University campus. Gindi campus is supposed to be the first choice for most of the students who would like to do engineering. So uh, the top cream joins the Gindi campus. So he conducted a test in mathematics. And uh, what he did was the same question paper, but the active voice got changed to passive voice. Something like, I give you 20 rupees became, you borrowed 20 rupees from me. And uh, they changed the values. And the number of percentage of pass was just 35%. Because even many children had wrote memory the problems from the textbook and which they tried to repeat it in the examination. So the concept teaching has changed. So if at all you are pa parents, if you feel that the child was brilliant throughout the education system till the child came to 12th, suddenly the child did not get good marks. It is not because of the child. It's because the question paper pattern has changed. There is more amount of creative thinking that goes into a question paper pattern. So if at all the child has not been successful in getting very good marks in certain subjects which you uh, presume that the child will do well, uh, don't mistake the child. College can make some children brilliant. It can also be opposite to some children because they have been entrained in a particular fashion. They have been made as a regimen, uh, stand up, talk, sit down, listen, uh, mode to a freedom of uh, interaction and facilitation in a higher education institute. Can sometimes uh, children go astray because there is no control on them, uh, control in quotes uh, on them. So both ways it can happen. But uh, with proper guidance by parents, uh, where the parents have to spend some more time with the children, especially when the children are completing the plus two or tenth, be supportive to the children. So now try to identify what the child's core strengths are, <coughs> which would be a core strength and transfer to them. So is there any mechanism to identify the core strength or is it a more personal uh, endeavor that the parents should engage in? Sir? That's a good point, you know, like how to identify the core strength of the child. To my knowledge, actually, parents, when they start looking at the child, which subject, which book the child frequently reads, usually a child will take the books which the child loves to read. I, I come to understand that uh, in Russia, they tried this in a particular uh, place in Russia. They used to take children uh, at their growing age, uh, when they are in class four or five, that's primary education, the peak of primary education, before they go into secondary. Mm. They take them into a sort of a hall where there are different cabins uh, in which different subjects are, you know, like uh, one cabin will have just history, one cabin will have science, uh, biology, one cabin will have physics, one cabin chemistry, one cabin sociology and things like that. And the child is uh, made to go through anywhere they can go, come back, go. And then they try to observe through the cameras and find where the child is spending more time. So naturally, if a child is spending more time in a particular cabin which is offering a particular subject, then you feel that the child has an inclination to go towards that subject. And then you sit and talk to the child. Oh, so why, what, how about the displays over there? And then mold the child towards that direction so that the child becomes brilliant in that particular subject. And moreover, you know, like even today's uh, syllabi curriculum, even though we try to bring changes, somehow the world pressure is also there. Like for example, in uh, biology, if you take zoology in the school level, there used to be dissections. But the, but the child has to dissect a frog and uh, a cockroach and things like that. Then the, it started, you know, people started questioning. One was there was a sort of a representation from the animal ethics group that why should we sacrifice the animals? But at the same time, there were questions raised. Even I had a feeling that you teach a child in school, uh, starting from, you know, like, uh, love your butterfly, this is a beautiful butterfly, this is a beautiful animal, this is a beautiful bird. And then as the child goes, grows to class 9, 10, put an animal on the desk and say, cut the animal now. You know, like it's a conflict of interest. The class 3 teaches you, sun rises in the east. Are you right? Is that right? Sun rises or not from the east? East, yes. Are you right? And what does it set? Set? West. West. As the child goes further in class 8, the teacher comes and tells in the class, the sun neither rises nor sets. It's the world, earth that rotates. Yeah. So there's a conflict. It, it is spoiling my common sense, you know, like you, some teacher tells me that the sun rises and another teacher comes and tells me the sun does not rise. Nobody takes the pain or pressure to tell the child that it appears to rise because at a young age you wouldn't understand how the earth rotates. So the teacher told you that the sun rises from the east. But actually, in fact, this is what happens. It appears to rise from the east. Child has to have curiosity to understand as to what is happening. 
if that comes into our education system that gives a foundation and that foundation gives the choice of the subject for the child because the child starts liking that subject gradually so the core development starts developing how does this physical principle work how does this chemical reaction happen how can i contribute something to it you know that is innovation so today the 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 world is thinking about uh, creating an innovative thought in the minds of the child there are lots of programs like the government of india from the ministry of science and technology has a program called as iris mm -hmm. where you, where they try to encourage children to come out with innovations mm -hmm. so you innovate something you innovate something you have an innovation then you are invited for the national fair where you participate and if you are selected from the national fair you are allowed to compete at the international science and engineering fair in the us oh. and if you win a grand award a minor planet is named after you is it difficult? I don't think so. Yeah. So far, almost 29 Indian children have minor planets on their names. Oh. You can be next if you are listening to this. So what I'm trying to tell you is there are lots of such innovations. There are lots of brilliance in children. Don't estimate the child based on marks. This is what I'm trying to repeat. They say a child can be brilliant in thought, may not be able to express it in writing. That doesn't mean that the child is not brilliant. So you identify the core strength of the child by observing the child repeatedly. And if the child is moving towards a particular core strength, even if you feel engineering, within engineering, there are so many courses today, 20, 25 branches of engineering. Identify the core strength and give that core strength to the child. If a child has a core strength to do, for example, electronics, because the child has been creative, has been working with robotics, wants to do something with AI, wants to use Python as a language, wants to grow further, that is the intention of the child and you tell the child, no, 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 don't do that. You better do architecture because you will get money into it. Now, that is not an attitude of a parent. A parent should be able to understand what would be better for the child and what the child would be able to perform better. That is how you have got brilliance in this. Way. If uh, APJ Kalam would have been forced to study something else, he might not have come up in life. He studied physics, so he is what he is today. So he, I would have been a completely lost entity if I had not studied zoology. You would not be interviewing me had you not done your English by by chance, because just because we love those subjects. Mm. Right? So that is what every parent should try to understand. Uh, as I was going through your profile, uh, the book that you have written interested me to put one question. Uh, the title of your book, Man, Makkal and Mahasul, which means soil, people and the produce. What should the education of this soil do to strengthen the produce of uh, the academia? Uh, incidentally, it so happened that I was writing a series in uh, Tamil magazine. Uh, the thing is, you know, like uh, I wanted to give a different uh, concept to soil. Mm. Like soil is something living and all those concepts. And uh, one particular thing is I wanted to prove that the soil has a digestive system, a circulatory system, a respiratory system. But the best is suddenly it occurred to me whether soil has a brain. Mm. The soil have a brain. Because, you know, like my maths teacher would always tell me, I could never perform good in maths in school. He would always tell me that uh, inside my head there was <laughs> okay. clay, right? Mandela Kaliman, that's how the Tamil idiom yes, goes, yes. where you have clay in your head. So it occurred to me to find out whether uh, soil also has a brain. And if I meet my school teacher today, I will go and tell him, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you take soil, dig a pit and put any biomass into it, close it, what will happen? It will decompose. Yeah. Right? You agree? Yes. Sir. But you put a seed into it, it will not decompose, it will germinate. Mm -hmm. A soil can distinguish what it has to decompose, what it has to germinate. Great. Great. So, soil has a? Brain. I still recollect when my grandfather, when I was walking and when I was a young boy and uh, running around, I don't know, one particular day I was stamping my feet on the floor and walking in front of my grandpa. He looked at me and said, what are you trying to do? I said, uh, why? What's wrong? He said, you're not supposed to stamp on the soil. I said, uh, but why? He said, that's the one which gives us food. I never knew that much later after several years I'll be specializing on soils and earthworms and trying to work on it. But what I learned in the process was those people had wisdom. We have only theory knowledge. Yeah. In that one word, that, that is something sacred you are not supposed to stamp, gives the entire meaning of my entire research which has been going today. So, uh, what I understood in the course of time was, I have to unlearn what I learned in a degree and learn from people. And unlearning is more difficult than learning. 
So we have to channelize our children in future in such a way that they learn which they should be proud to keep it rather than unlearn and learn again in life. So much of my thought process and my research is based on my learning from my farmers. And much of my work has been on earthworms as one of the pioneering work of this country. Now, all this happened was because, again, a point of information to the parents and children. It was an accident. My work on earthworms, which is today regarded as one of the leading works in the country, is uh, by accident. Okay. I want to narrate it to you as a story over here. You know, like uh, I am basically a general zoologist my, with my graduation. A fishery biologist with my post-graduation, a marine biologist by my MPhil. Now, after I completed my MPhil, I wanted to do my PhD, but my professor and head at that time did not permit me in the Madras University to continue with my PhD. Oh. So I came back to my department, a new college. I was sitting in my room when one of my former students, one Dr. Kalimur Rahman. Now, this young boy, uh, he had done his project with my head of the department, and my head of the department was also the principal, Professor Moidian. Unfortunately, he would not have much time to guide his own students. So I used to assist him guide his students as well. And I learned in the process. He used to work on the fish eye retina. And this boy comes to me after my MPhil and says, Sir, I could not get a seat in MPhil. Can you please help me? Can I do some research? I said, I have to take permission from my professor. So I just walked into his chamber and instantly he was available in the department. I went to him and said, Sir, you are student whom I helped has come here and he wants that I should do something, help him. And he wants to do something on research. And he said, uh, he just looked at me and said, I always dreamt that research should start in my college. Please proceed. Had he said, no, I do not know where I have been. I came back and incidentally, there was a paper lying on the floor. That was an invitation for ethology seminar. Ethology means animal behavior. So I need live organisms. I said, would you like to work on ethology? This boy said, yes, anything, sir. Just at that moment, my lab assistant crosses my room. I called him. I said, uh, Mr. Buhari, do you have any particular live animal in the lab? And he said, sir, we have earthworms. On that day, had I told him, no, I need fish. Go and get fish because I'm a fishery biologist. You would not have invited me today. I would have been insignificant in this world. I said, okay, give me. Now, when the worms came to me and we started working, I had to culture the worms, I had to standardize the worms, I had to standardize everything. And the whole new branch of science came with the name Vermitech, which I had coined. Yeah. So, you know, like, it, it, it's, it's look for opportunities. Nature always gives parents and children signals as well as sounds. Sounds are audible. Engineering, medicine, uh, commerce, computer science. These are sounds. Zoology, botany, micropalsy. These are signals. Identify the signals in your child. Identify the signal in your child and try to give that spark a lift. Your child may make a bigger sound than what the sound would have provided the child. Educating children is both the responsibility of the teachers as well as the parents. Parent is the first lap of the child. I would always believe today's teacher is not a teacher. Today's teacher is a facilitator. Mm -hmm. There is so much of syllabus because being in the curriculum committee and also designing the textbooks for government of Tamil Nadu, the content which we provide, a teacher may sometimes may not be able to complete the entire word to word, but the teacher would be able to highlight and provide information about what is most important. Today's teacher is a facilitator. Today's teacher is a counselor. Today's teacher is a knowledge transfer facilitator. But the basic foundation, the strength, the core, the support is the parent. The problem starts when this balance goes in balance. You know, like you go to a PTA meeting and try to keep a watch. Every parent wants to blame the teacher for the non-performance of a child, which is very wrong. A parent should approach a teacher and say that, I find my child not able to perform well in this. Can we together work on this strategy? Can we together work on this strategy and make brilliance? Many children today are identified with dyslexia. Many children at the young stage of it, I have seen parents thrashing their children just because the child writes 12 for 21, writes 5 in an inverted way in the mirror image writing and starts thrashing. I want to tell such parents that this is not a disease, it's only a disorder. And it cannot be corrected by the teacher alone. It can be corrected with the parent-teacher cooperation. This can be corrected like anything brilliance. Autism spectrum disorder can be corrected. There are several set disorders which could be corrected just by the cooperation of the parents and teachers. Tell me uh, yourself, uh, Mashuk, as a kid, when, you, when we grew up, 
our school was not very close to our homes and uh, our breakfast was very, very reasonable, very normal. And then we were made to walk to the school. Yeah. So by the time we make, I, I had to walk or at least cycle later for about two kilometers, two and a half kilometers in the hot sun, when the sun rises and you walk towards the school, you sweat, you reach there, half your energy is lost. The entire energy remaining, you concentrate on the class. Today, your breakfast has become all this artificial food with high sucrose content and high fructose content. I don't want to name the products, but what you provide for your children based on television advertisements is not real food. Now, this food gives you so much of extra energy because it is full of sugar in it. Now, that energy is there. And then you put your child in your two-wheeler or in your air-conditioned car and you take till the doorstep of the school and leave the child. There is so much of an energy in the child. What will the child do in the class? Sit and listen, jump in the class. And you call it as attention deficit hyperactive disorder. Now, what I mean to say is, try to bring a change in the food habits of the children. Try to be with the child, understand the child, nourish the child, bring the child. The child will be able to perform. And when the child performs, identify the core strength of the child, support the child, the child will be able to do well in life. So, we, we have been talking about uh, what should educationists do to strengthen the produce of academia. But when people choose the institutions, they are, there is always a question of which one is better, which board is better, the matriculation, the state board, the ICSE or the IGCSE, which one is better. Is there any particular difference of standard or quality that they provide? Unfortunately, today parents, when they talk among themselves, uh, the way they rank in the lighter terms I'm trying to share with you, how much are you paying for your child uh, for uh, education per semester? And the uh, mother says, uh, I pay 15,000 per semester. Then, they, uh, then uh, I am paying 20,000. That means it's a better school. <laughs> now, unfortunately, people have related money with the terms of quality. It is not so. Sometimes there are some schools which are charging a lower fee with a wonderful, brilliant education. There are some which charge a very high fee. Maybe the child may not be feeling comfortable. They may be offering, but the child may not feel comfortable in such a situation. Uh, I would always feel where a child can get a holistic education as the best school. It is not the system per se. Where a child gets a holistic education, holistic attention from the parent is what would be the best way of educating the child. Uh, if you talk about this uh, CBSC, Central Board of uh, Secondary Education, especially NCRT is closely associated with uh, CBSC, yeah. National Council of Education, Research and Training. Whereas the state boards are controlled by the State Council for Education, Research and Training, SERT. Now, coming from Tamil Nadu, I would uh, be very proud to say today that with the revised curriculum or the revised syllabus, I would rank uh, our books as uh, the top books today in the country. In fact, uh, class, children who are completing class 11 and 12, uh, especially those who would be going to 12 this year, will be having uh, their new textbooks. Okay. And uh, they have been prepared in a very good uh, high standard and that would be wonderful. So, uh, we, you know, like I would uh, always say that parents who had in mind that my child is studying in state board or matriculation, whether this child would be able to be successful and compete with children, other children, I would always say that they can today feel very happy that they are going to face, uh, they are going to read very good quality books yeah. and uh, would be confident to appear for any competitive examinations which are being conducted by our country. Okay. IGCSE and all is very expensive, but it's a separate board by itself. Uh, the next question comes is, uh, you know, like, uh, my child is studying in vernacular medium. Mm. Uh, sometimes uh, it might be Tamil medium or Telugu medium or Hindi medium or uh, there are so many languages in the country. Having moved with children and also with lots of uh, competitions mm. where children from different walks of life participate, I have always felt that these children are not inferior to any other children uh, who study with the English medium. Uh, I have been associated with the National Children's Science Congress, I have been associated with the IRIS, I have been associated with the Ignite, Agni Ignite programs where we select children. I have sat in their uh, television programs, I have sat with the children in their scientific uh, pursuits. And sometimes I feel that these children who come from rural areas studying with their uh, vernacular background are brilliant, but they are sometimes not able to express themselves. Uh, I am not trying to say anything wrong about the children from the city. But uh, these children are not able to express themselves. So, what they require is a slight uh, way of soft skills, which uh, would be a very great uh, sort of an asset for these children. And they are not inferior to any other child in this country. Okay. Uh, we've been talking about the board uh, that 
parents should be choosing or is there any such thing when they go to opt for the universities or is there any difference between the standards of indian and the foreign universities if a child studies uh, uh, in some school and from a different system then uh, they have to be taking the eligibility certificate to join the university and the greatest fun would be that if you study uh, a graduate program in a university in Tamil Nadu itself. I am telling you with reference to Tamil Nadu because uh, we are recording this in Chennai. Now, if you are doing it in, for example, Thiruvallur University in Velur, which is hardly a two hours, two and a half hours drive from Chennai, and you want to do your post-graduation in Madras University, you have to take an eligibility certificate from Madras University. Yeah. You know, like uh, the, the, the education system, unfortunately, has not been made in par in our country. I would appreciate the day when uh, the education uh, department or the education ministry of the government of India makes a policy that any child studying any type of education system within the country, whether you are studying a CBSE or the state board or matriculation, whatever it is, they can go from one school to another. They can join any university they want. They are all in power. Okay. That would be a great day for us. Universities, uh, you know, like uh, we have in India itself, we have uh, regular government aided universities which are government supported universities which we call it as central universities we also have state universities uh, apart from state universities we also have deemed it to be universities they are private universities i would always tell children to take a wise decision what would be the best for them i would not tell anything wrong against uh, any one of the universities but there may be some universities which are not recognized so it is the duty of a child to go into the net Put in for the Association of Indian Universities and find out whether these are all universities associated together and work with the government of India and whether they have been recognized by the University Grants Commission before they join that university. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, after you get your degree, you may not be qualified to occupy a post which that degree offers. So, you have to be very careful. International universities, that's real fun. Uh, because there's always a fancy, you know, like I studied abroad is a fancy. And in fact, even big major universities, major players today, have campuses elsewhere. Like even Bits Pilani has a campus in Dubai. Mm -hmm. Mahipal has a campus in Dubai because there's a sizable Indian population. There are bigger universities in Australia uh, which have their uh, branches, uh, campuses in uh, Malaysia. Now, if you have to go all the way to Australia and study, Indian parents don't send their children to Australia because coming from Australia into India would take a long time, whereas Malaysia is well connected with India. So, you know, like they have a campus over there and you put your child over there. You are here in just about four and a half hours. So, um, there are campuses which are coming up. Apart from that, they are in no way different from most of the other countries. There are wonderful, good, recognized universities and there are also some universities which are not recognized. In fact, we all know that some years back, many children were deported from USA because the university was not a recognized university. Now, I would request parents, especially those parents who want to educate their children overseas, kindly check from their consular office whether they are the recognized universities where the children can go. And just because you asked about foreign universities, our education system is how many years? Schooling is 12 years. Yeah. Schooling is 12 years. If you want to put your child for higher education overseas, they require 16 years of education for higher education, that okay. is for going into post-graduation. Now, if those parents who have decided that my child should do a post-graduation somewhere outside the country, if they are going to do their 12 years of schooling with three years graduate program, then they complete only 15 years. Yeah. They are not eligible. So, if you have the resources and you have decided that I want to do something, then it's better to do a four-year program, which is a B.Tech program or something like that, which gives you four years. That completes you 16 years and you become eligible. Okay. These are the nuances of this technology. Even otherwise, they are eligible. They can go, but they will have to do one year's short-term program and then do a postgraduate program. It is available, but this facilitates them easily. So, before the parents decide, they have to think about all these things and then give the foundation to the children. So, when uh, there are a lot of subjects and courses that are available and there is a question, if I do a particular course, will I get uh, an employment in the same stream and uh, how to address this? Sir? That's a good question. Right? When I was heading the department of biotechnology, uh, parents would come to me and say that I would like to put my child under you for MSc in biotechnology and uh, will you get a job? Uh, and I would, uh, with a very smiling face, say that he may not get a job. <laughs> the 
Then is, you are heading the department. I said, yes, I am heading the department. Then you are telling me, how can you say that he will not get a job? You ask me a straight question, I am giving you a straight answer. Today, you know, like it is not the degree which gets you a job. It's a passion which gets you a job. Okay. Uh, uh, by doing a particular subject or a particular branch, you don't get a job. It is how much of passion you have learned and what mechanism you have in mind and uh, how much of knowledge you gain in the subject gets you a job. Today's industry does not select you based on marks alone. Marks are only for screening the applications to invite you for uh, interview. But after going there, sometimes we find that uh, the brilliant, so-called brilliant, do not get a placement. Whereas the so-called, according to the society, as mediocre, get better placements because they have learned with passion. So I always tell children that it's not just aim at the marks, but aim at your knowledge. After a particular level of education, it's not your marks which get you a placement, but your knowledge and depth of knowledge in that particular subject and how you can mold. The industry does not want a clay pot. The industry wants a clay which they can mold into a pot. So you prepare the child for the industry. The industry education institution rapo is now picking up gradually. This has to grow. And the syllabus has to be periodically revised. Well, there's no point, you know, like computers and the machinery which comes into our laboratories gets so outdated that by the time the child completes and goes over there, the industry has evolved further. Yeah. So if you are going to prepare a fully made clay pot, that clay pot is purchased by the industry, it will break. So you mold the, money, the clay into such a beautiful way and give it to them. The industry knows how to make it into a pot of whatever shape, dimension, desire they want. So let education institutions help in creating or molding the clay. Let parents facilitate and give a product which can be molded into a clay. And let the system operate in such a way that the industry designs it into a pot and we have a bright future for all our children who are going to come in the future. Great sir, that was a great show. Now uh, we'll have rapid fire questions. I'll be giving you words. So you're uh, going to shoot me or fire me? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be having one words on which you can uh, give a reflective answers. Uh, what according to you is a school? A place where I feel happy to go. And uh, leadership? Is one where I would lead when there's a difficult situation and follow when the compliments fall. Uh, nation building? My faith for my country and uh, diversity is my strength. Great. And uh, the most favorite book to you and the author? I love Mitch Albom's book, Tuesdays with Maury. Okay. If you want me to tell the reason. Yeah. It's about a relationship between a teacher and a student. And it was almost similar to my professor, Professor Murthy, who had a great influence on my life and myself. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being on assets today. It was a great show. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for the opportunity. Good luck. That was ICT Academy Dialogue with Dr. Sultan Ahmed Ismail, a veteran educationist, an author, and the director of Eco Science Research Foundation. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Insta, and Twitter.